and stone labels and um get pairs. Okay. Um let's see. So pod preemption. Um I'll take a look at that and and uh and follow up. Can you do me a favor and um send me a message, Bobby, just in Slack so that I can look at it and and do what I need to with it? Um, I know it's in the, the documents here somewhere, but just it'll make it a lot faster for to have it. Sure, sure. I'll just do it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that. Okay, let me reshare screen. Um, you might have noticed that I accidentally wasn't recording. Uh, sorry about that. We're recording now. Um, it's that kind of day. Let me share my screen again. Okay, um, moving along. So uh, there's nothing. Uh, do you want to talk about the branch that you cut, the or the um, the the beta you cut last night, Adam? Do you want to talk about that process at all, or? Um, trying to think. I I ended up relying pretty heavily on the master tests on the basis that the 1.8 tests weren't quite ready. One thing I bumped into is the Inego tool pretty much relies upon um, there being tests running in the 1.8 branch. Um, it's kind of hardwired to dig into the, the, the test scripts, which meant that it got a little bit confused. But I was trying to go to master, but it was trying to go to the 1.8 thing, and it was finding disaster in the 1.8 stuff and refusing to do anything. So I spent a bit of time with DJM and David McMahon, and we managed to uh, work out that. Oh, my inaudible. I was just saying, um, it was trying to do it before the 1.8 testing was in place, caused a few hiccups, um, took an hour or two to figure out. Um, but David was awesome, and we got it all figured out in the end. And it's a doable thing. It's not like it's impossible. Um, that the tools actually support, if you know the right, right way to, to work them. Um, I felt a little bit nervous pushing the whole thing out, not knowing that we had a, a perfect test signal. There was enough kind of flaky tests. Um, but it seemed stable enough. Um, it all built okay and, you know, worked out. There may be a good argument that's come up before that uh, we should actually prune this set of tests that Inego is using to, to or in fact, the, I guess the release 1.8 blocking set of tests um, from where they are today, because um, all my experience of it so far has been that the tests are sufficiently fuzzy and noisy that you're not actually using them in a useful fashion. Um, but that's a different discussion. I'm sure everybody's had 18 times. But, um, but my, my perspective as a branch manager is that it's a somewhat scary job to decide whether or not all this red is, in fact, essentially green. Click. Agreed. I, I don't think you're the first person to have that uh, anxiety. Uh, <laughs> this seems to be a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, yeah, we definitely need to, to continue uh, working to improve that process uh, and really understand what the full scope of a, a master blocking or a, a release blocking test suite should be. Um, okay, and so you didn't have any build failures uh, when you did the, the the build, it was basically fine, um, as I understand it. So, uh, Aaron actually is going to join us pro possibly in about seven minutes. He had a, a conflict, but he had put this stuff in here. I actually managed to get out early. Oh, cool. Yay. Fantastic. Um, uh, do you want to give, uh, give the rundown on this? Sure. So as you can see by clicking on that first link, um, the ops job is back to green as of a little under 24 hours ago. Um, it's due in large part to that pull request, which is the next link. We're basically, we got, um, we got together and we discussed why it was that um, the COPS job seems to be continually so far afield. Part of that is kind of a lack of documentation and clear understanding of how all of the test uh, jobs got to where they are today. Long story short, you know, we removed the, the far afield COPS scenario. COPS is now basically using the same set of code all the way up and down as the rest of the jobs are. 
and we have confirmed that yes, it is in fact testing the correct version of code as well. Um, when you pull request, it's actually testing the code in that pull request and standing up a cluster from that pull request. So um, we're happy with that. My proposal would be that we continue to let that run over the weekend, um, see if we're still happy with where it is. And then we have talked about moving it back to blocking uh, no later than whenever code freeze is lifted, which if we go by the schedule would be Wednesday the 13th. Um, but we may possibly consider putting it back to blocking as soon as Monday or Tuesday if this group is happy with where it's at. Any questions? Cool. Huge shout out to uh, Justin, Santa Barbara, and Sen Lu for um, putting their heads together on this. It was, um, you know, sort of mostly a known problem, and we were working on the fix um, before we had this discussion on Wednesday. Um, but it was good to have everybody in the same room and uh, chat it out. Great. And I, I would like to, to really, if at all possible, have a decision on uh, in or out again in the submit queue uh, Monday in our next uh, burn down meeting. Okay, let's, so how about we plan on this group being the deciders for that? Um, okay. And we can make that decision based on the data that we generate over the weekend. I would love to make sure we have uh, a quorum to, to make that decision. I don't know if Jordan Liggett is around, but uh, I'd love to have Jordan's input on that as well. All right, I'll see if I can ping him offline. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, okay, moving along. Uh, master E to E upgrades. Who put that in there? Uh, that's me. Okay. Um, um, just a, a quick update on this. Um, our, our GKE serial tests went down uh, a couple days ago. Um, we're probably just going to bump the timeouts and see if that fixes everything. So hopefully that'll be back green. Um, there is a known uh, failure on the, the alpha GCE. Um, so that's why that particular test is red. We're trying to work with Signode to get that um, alpha feature uh, further feature flagged on, on that item. Um, and um, upgrade tests are unfortunately still missing logs. Um, this has been a, a, an ongoing issue with um, our ability to debug a lot of the upgrade test failures is that we just don't have the logs to give to the SIGs so they can try to um, create patches. That became pretty complicated because um, getting the fix into master of Kubernetes didn't actually work because we had to cherry pick the fix. Um, I'm not quite sure what the rollout process of that looks like uh, in the future, but hopefully that'll work. Um, hopefully we'll get that in and start having logs to give to like SIG API machinery for some of the upgrade tests. Um, two of the upgrade tests have started to fail over the last couple of days. I just need to start looking into that as I've been um, sort of busy with EDE recently. Um, I, I will look into that. A general comment that I have for the upgrade tests is that they're incredibly flaky in weird ways. Um, if you look at some of the upgrade tests, they just some some most of most of the time the whole test fails. But which individual test out of that um, out of that failure has actually triggered it changes from test to test run. Um, so out of the like dozen or so tests that we run, eight of them sporadically are consistently either going green or red, which makes it really hard for me to um, know if this is an infrastructure thing or if it's a, or whatever. So um, I'm, I'm trying my best to, to sort of dig into those logs as much as I can. Um, any, any, some, if anybody has any pretend to help with uh, upgrade and sort of making sense of all this, that would be helpful, particularly if somebody has worked closely with that um, upgrade test. Upgrade. Jobs. Any volunteers on this call uh, can help Eric with doing that? So I'm, I'm currently helping with that, but I think I'm not uh, 
qualified as somebody who works closely with this. I pushed some people to fix one or two issues with it, but still lots of missing and many stale jobs actually that I'm trying to increase the time out to see if they got anything from those two. If you're in um, uh, Sunnyvale, it's where the new, uh, if you're there and can find uh, David Opp, uh, he has done upgrade tests uh, previously. It used to be his, his deal. And here at Core West, you can, uh, we can chat with Dan too. Yeah, that would probably be good. Okay. Okay. Um, thanks for the example. That definitely helps too, to have something to look at. Um, anything else before we move on? Eric? Uh, nothing for mine. Okay. Or actually, I was going to mention that um, the scale tests have consistently been failing, um, but I've heard previously that that's not necessarily expected, but just sort of happens consistently. Uh, Aaron, I think you mentioned this before, that this is one of these like forever red tests. Um, uh, it is my hope and dream that they not be forever red or we kick them out or increase the frequency if they continue to be forever red. Um, Shum has been working on this pretty consistently. Uh, so right. Looking at the release master blocking board. So um, why don't we put something in here where I can maybe provide more of an actionable update on Monday? Um, I mean, I, I'm sort of relatively okay with the continued um, human looks at this and makes a call. I, I know that's not optimal, but you know, not to change everything in the next few weeks we have for the release. Sure, sure, we can do that, but I, I would at least like to be able to, to help the human with a story about uh, where they are and why they're failing, other than um, works breaks as expected. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Don't want to make Adam's job harder than it already is, for sure. Uh, okay, Sen, do you want to cover, cover the release 1.8 CI? Uh, so I sent out the PR that set up all the jobs. Um, so waiting for review, hopefully get that merged today and we can get some signal over the weekend. Um, um, yeah, I still need to uh, do the kubectl skew and upgrade test. I'll open a new issue for that, but hopefully just um, convert the 1516 ones to like the current release. Uh, and also discussed with some member from the team, so we don't we don't need CVM support for release one eight. So, but we still want to upgrade from CVM to GCI. Um, so I'm going to create upgrade tests like from both CVM and GCI, but upgrade to GCI only. Hope everyone can agree with that. Um. What are the, I mean, this is sort of gets into Google's playground. What uh, are there any kind of uh, other sort of people we need to run that by? Uh, no, I've, I've been, um, I, I, this is Adam speaking. I've been looking at um, the deprecation of CVM for a while. It's um, so this, this is kind of a, an agreement we made. It probably needs a bit more publication because of well, publicity because it's kind of, um, it seems to have caught a few SIGs slightly by surprise, but um. Uh, yeah, it's uh, this is this is a good outcome. It's going to reduce the number of tests we're running, and um, and it, we're certainly not attempting to test 1.8 on top of CVM. CVM is a dead distro as of 10 days in the future, um, so it's it, it de facto not supported. So Adam, if we can't create CVM nodes in 10 days, how are we going to get an upgrade test from CVM to GCI for 1.7.1.8 working when we want to cut a release in 20 days? The idea is we have um, CVM running on one. If you have a, a, a cluster running on CVM on 1.7, it should be able to upgrade to GCI on 1.8. We'd no point of actually running a 
um, cluster on, on CVM. Can you continue right. to provision CVM clusters for 1.7? You can continue, as of the deprecation date, you can continue to grow them. You cannot create new ones. So if we're upgrading a 7.7 cluster to on CVM, how are we going to create that cluster? What's the precise upgrade you're trying to do? Okay, so for open, I guess to summarize, for open source, it should be fine. We're not yanking out the images. They will still be there. You can still create them. Um, for GKE, if we're going to block creation, you won't be able to create a GKE cluster at 1.7 with container VM to do that test with. We'll just have to drop that from the matrix. I believe so, yeah. Okay. That seems fine. Okay. Yeah, I think <clears throat> like if we just cannot create CBM clusters anymore, we can probably go and clean up all the like CBM related jobs. Yeah. That will save a lot of tax resources as well. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, okay. All uh, right, uh, moving along, we have documentation and marketing looks like a tracking board. This is cool. Who did this beautiful thing? Wait, oh, this is the features tracking. Okay, I thought this was different. Um, who would like to speak to the documentation? Steve, are you? Yeah, I'll okay. say a couple of things. Um, so the, in, the, um, in the timeline, the idea was that all documentation PRs would be created by uh, today, and they'd all be um, ready for emerging by a week from today. So in the, in the tracking board, we can see that um, there are several uh, features that have been marked that they need docs. That's good. Um, uh, but some of those don't have PRs created yet. So I sent email yesterday uh, to several groups just to remind people to, um, you know, if your feature needs docs, make sure the needs docs is marked yes and um, that you get a PR created. Okay. Um, wow. There's a, there's a lot of missing documentation here, Steve. This makes me nervous. Okay. Um, what can we do to help you find more success with people getting those done? Um, <clears throat> I've noticed one issue in the docs repo, and I apologize that I haven't followed up on it. Um, I've been slammed with other things. Um, but some folks, I've seen at least three PRs assigned to me um, that are, in fact, against the 1.8 docs, and they are mistakenly submitted against the master branch, and I haven't seen them tracked elsewhere. So we do have some, I don't know how much, but some documentation happening that's not being properly managed or tracked. I've called out the other side of this issue in a community meeting, and I'll bring it up in the docs meeting next week. But just thought I'd mention it here, and we can figure out what to do about it. I apologize I haven't followed up on it. Okay. Um, and if it gets close to the wire, we can definitely help with rebasing those ourselves. But I don't think we're at that point yet. No, no, we're not. And I should be able to get back. I mean, at least the ones in my queue, I should be able to take care of today. Um, okay. Or at least ask the right questions about them. And that's a small handful. That doesn't account for the whole list. But right. I thought it might help a larger understanding. Yeah, I've been looking through the, the master PRs against master trying to to, you know, trying to determine which ones might be mistakenly in there. And it, it looks like there aren't too many more uh, because there aren't, there aren't that many that are recent enough to, to be in that category. But I still could, could use some help finding them if, any, you know, if anybody knows of any of those that are, um, are 1.8 features. We've well, definitely some check my queue, Steve. You've probably seen the ones I'm talking about already. Um, yeah. Or if you haven't, I was planning on flagging you about them. <laughs> yeah. Then okay. We've had some discussion about making um, the, the release 1.8 branch the default branch for PRs, at least you know, between now and the end of this milestone. Um, but we don't have agreement on that. I'm still discussing that with um, uh, people on the doc team, and, and there's a lot of disagreement. So um, for the moment, what we, what we have is that the default branch is master, and um, we need to tell people that if you um, if you have a 1.8 feature, your PR goes to the uh, release 1.8 branch.
Well, we'll, uh, we'll do that again. We'll say that again at the community meeting um, and we'll just keep harping on it. That's what okay. we can do, so. And Aaron was really nice and did that uh, last meeting. Thank you very much again, Aaron, for doing that. Yep, I'll say it out loud here. I just said it in chat yesterday. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> no Fantastic. problem. All right, on to release notes. Uh, there's a number of open PRs uh, that need to be merged. Um, the draft uh, is still looking drafty. So there are five PRs open, and one is our editorial discussion between me and the uh, uh, Jennifer and there are other four and one I have approved and okay. waiting for a uh, technical review and the uh, other three I have left some comments and I think Jennifer also is giving some love. Okay. I had a, I had a general question. Um, as a SIG lead, I was looking for a place to put all of the very detailed line items about all. So in previous releases, we've had sort of on a per sig basis, high level, you know, features that we've added throughout the release, as well as enumerating sort of any significant PR that somebody might be interested in. Um, I was trying to put, so currently the release note seems to be a lot more of those high level, here are the features that we, large features that we pushed or to, you know, a new version or something like that. It, there doesn't seem to be a place for the actual line items. Well, I, I did, you know, each of these individual things. I, I think we declared relative bankruptcy on the, the list of PRs. So at least the, the automatic stripping of it until the new tooling to pull it from the issues that linked issues is done. So I think if you have line item PR pilot, you should do it in the component section and just add it in line with like a lot of features. Like it's all, they're all like user facing. So if it's like a user facing PR, then I think it just puts it, put it in there with the, the component information. Okay. So. Yeah, and, uh, and this is something too, we need to, um, Radhika, the, the document that I have with the uh, documentation for merge PRs with release notes equals true, that label, um, we're gonna have to have a process of going through all those and just see if any of those actually need to be added to the release notes. And probably that'll, that'll have to be coordinating with some of the SIGs too, to see if they actually want that information in there. Um, not sure best how to do that, but you've got secret magic skills uh, that you can apply to the problem that I don't have. I think we can add that to add the query for each SIG um, and a big status report to the for the go no go status of the release itself. So the same way we would do with issues that are open per SIG, give them a list of PRs per SIG that they need to figure out what they need to add to the release or okay. Okay. Um. Jennifer and uh, Radhika, you may want to merge, keep merging in your edits okay. uh, draft PR um, because it's going to diverge from the PRs that the SIGs are putting themselves. So you don't want to have to necessarily keep rebasing that PR um, every time. Okay. So you do probably yeah. just keep it like okay. once every couple of days. Okay, cool. yeah. yeah, mine actually um, should not be merged. Um, I should maybe close it. Because um, it was really meant to be discussion and the kind of reorganization that I propose, and it is something we don't want to do until most of the content is in there. Okay. Okay. Just in case anybody else gets itchy fingers with regard to those PRs. No, whoever whoever's PR goes in first, it's going to force a rebase on all the others, I believe. So. Well, that's right, but I think that that one at this point would confuse. Um, it would really make a mess. So let's just leave it alone. And I will undertake, Radhika and I still need to discuss the high level stuff that's in it. And I will undertake to manually redo, you know, whatever I rebase from um, based on what we agree um, is in there. It's in a way it's not a PR. It was just the easiest way for us to have a conversation. Okay. Gotcha. Cool. Well, we need a new label, right? Not really a PR. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a PR, but isn't. Uh, 
Great. And I put a note in here about the CVM discussion. I'd love to, if this is something that's going to be user impacting, that deprecation, and it's going to be something that um, Kubernetes people in the field are going to run into, uh, we may want to look at having documentation around that as well. Um, I would yeah. ask for help on that. It is super GKE specific. Yes. Uh, run these images outside of GKE. Right. So presumably there's going to be some some commercial PR around the change. Yeah, I would hope so. All right, uh, moving along, unless anybody else has uh, release notes, things to add. Uh, announcements, Daniel said, Q doesn't work, we got that. Um, got some to do's there. Uh, due to lack of reliable lack storage of upgrade system, we need to ask. Yeah, that so I, well. the, the second thing I put there, I just filed an issue and I just sent an email to Kubernetes dev. Uh, basically, if you have like a, I don't know, V1 beta 2 version of your API object and you delete the definition for that, you may strand objects that are stored uh, in that format in, in various people's clusters. Um, so we're going to have to request that people not do that until we have a reliable storage upgrade mechanism. Uh, does that make sense? There is a script right now that is supposed to do that, but uh, if you look at the issue, you'll see that the script has been inconsistently uh, called, um, and it's old and crufty and, and is missing half of the API versions. Uh, so so or version upgrades? Yes. Uh, so it's okay to deprecate an API uh, version. It's not okay to remove the definition from the source, source code. So this actually falls also into documentation realm then. Um, am I correct? Uh, or is yeah, the issue well, actually I fix it? it? It would be documentation for developers. It doesn't need to go in the release notes. Like, okay. this, this is something that you should therefore not see in the release notes. You should not see like version blah, blah, blah is deleted. Like, that shouldn't okay. be in the release notes because uh, that, will break, that will break the users unless they take heroic steps to make sure that their objects were updated. Okay. Okay. Does that qualify? Uh, Ask ahead. me later. <laughs> Make sense? Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you for doing yeah. that. There's an email and an issue, so. And to clarify on the earlier point, the approved for milestone label was never actually consumed by automation in the past. It was something that we humans used. Uh, to manually decide whether or not an issue should be kicked out of V1A. Um, I believe Maru now has a bot that makes sure that sufficient labels have been applied to issues that are in the V1A milestone, otherwise they'll get kicked out. But I'm just grepping through the source code. I don't think that label is looked at. Maru, are you on here? I wasn't, I wasn't claiming it is looked at. I was claiming it should have been added to the, uh, the flag. Apparently, yeah. there's no such thing as a flag that allows you to set that. Like looking through the submit, yeah. you it's hard. no requirement. It's hard. hard. No requir I, I'm very we confident. Don't get me wrong. But because, because there's the CLA yes label that is required. Yes, the list of labels that are used to block things from getting merged are hard coded in the submit queue munger. It is okay. not a flag. It's hard. Oh, it's not a flag. Okay. Not yeah. a flag. Mm -hmm. So the, the way the that was pretty. Sorry, go ahead. The way the Munger implements code freeze is it doesn't, right now, it doesn't purge anything unless it has the V18 milestone. In addition to the usual things of like, it's got the approved label and it doesn't have a list of labels that would block things from getting merged. Like, do not merge, release note required, do not merge work in progress, CLA, stuff like that, right? Um, so uh, it's, if things need to be kicked out from the milestone more aggressively, we should uh, work on the milestone maintainer muncher to do that. Or if there oh, needs yeah. to get another I label added to the things. I, I think that in the near term, uh, Daniel, your suggestion of we already we already enforced that the milestone be required. We should just enhance that. So you specify a milestone, that's required, and you have to have approved for milestone. It, that's a really easy fix. Yeah. yeah maybe maybe I'm misremembering well, and the label was used for for cherry picks. Yeah, you are. That's right. That's true. Yeah. Okay. 
we should also use it in code freeze because otherwise it's it's uh, too easy to accidentally have something merged. Yeah, so somebody has to accidentally slash LGTM and slash approve <laughs> the power to add something to the milestone, and then it will accidentally get merged. I well, uh, the the issue is that lots of people have the power to add something to the milestone, and lots of people have the power to LGTM and approve, and may not expect that just because it's listed for the milestone that that is sufficient. Let's follow up out of band. Yeah. Yeah, so just to be clear, look at how many of these things get merged manually, you know, like <laughs> there's, there's a lot of things happening right now that aren't necessarily following the, the bot workflow. So we need to, you know. So do we want to go ahead and start enforcing that? Or I think the alternative to that is we should start increasing awareness that if all of those three things are satisfied, then things will get merged. Yeah, I, I'm trying to understand the circumstances where somebody's doing a manual merge at this point. It doesn't. Hey, it, can I just one part on that? I think that might just be an artifact of how it's displayed. It shows is those. It'll show the ones that look like they're being manually merged. Those might have been merged by a like wrap up pull request. Both show up. Okay. Yeah, they might be coming coming to the batch. Batch Okay, I agree. Assess the scope of the problem, revisit yeah. automation yeah. that needs to be applied on Monday. Okay, fair enough. I think yeah. that's a great course of action. And I was also going to look at updating the submit queue or at least my GitHub to do that. I want to flip the order of how the milestone is looked at rather than the ones you exclude at, at the ones that you should be merging from. It's only ever three. All right, so I'm just going to put a to-do of generally of look at PR workflow and where bot intervention is, should be enforced. That's cool. Yeah, I'm just sensitive to like changing how the queue works as we're in the middle of burn down. This is something that always trips people up and confuses people. So making sure this is all highly visible, really well documented, agreed upon, decided upon, broadcast widely, all those things. That's... Hundred and fifty thousand percent. I'm very happy to try to document this if somebody has an hour or two to sit and, and sort of like be quizzed and try and explain it. I don't know who to talk to about that, but um, if somebody wants to, to say I know about this stuff, I will harass you and claim your time and write up your knowledge. Yeah, I think it's interesting. I, I think that we all or we all have our own varying opinions about what the actual current state is. Uh, or should be, and so uh, it'd be interesting to, to do a diff on all the various opinions on this and what's actually documented as, as policy out there. I don't know where one would even start on that process. We're talking implicit policy, not like enforced by the bot? Uh, yes. It sounds like maybe just a refresher of what is enforced by the bot could be helpful for this audience as well, or if you want to start with that on Monday. So I figure like if we don't have something enforced, um, people will just do whatever. So yes. correct. if there's behavior we want, we should probably enforce it. Well, I think that it's maybe one, a slight clarification on that would be if it's behavior we want and is expected by either community norms or it's documented somewhere or it's destructive if it isn't. I, I think it's, I think there's a, a bit of, you know, tr trying to get Aaron's desire of transparency and awareness and not, you know, really screwing up the works, but also trying to be responsible with this, this very <laughs> solemn responsibility we have of to produce quality code. So, or to, to manage quality code. Um, who is going to volunteer to pair with Adam on the current state of bot uh, enforcement functionality and labeling? I'm happy to participate. I've mainly been focused on the labeling side though. So, sorry, the issue side. So, someone who's more familiar with the PR process. I mean, I think we can, okay. anybody programmer can reverse engineer it out of, the, out of the submit queue, but someone who actually knows it off by heart would be better. I'm I can do my best. Okay, Phil, I would appreciate that. Like, I'm close to it, but I'm overcommitted right now. It would be counterproductive if I volunteered as much as I want to. So, thank you. 
That is really sweet, Phil. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Just to see what you say when it's done, maybe it'll be like, what? <laughs> Phil, I will, I will help with you on that too. I want to understand the submit queue and, and the bot. So I'll help with you with that. Cool. cool. Uh, so scheduling probably will be easier for you three since you have higher visibility of each other's schedules. Um, if you want to get a rough cut of the meeting in place and just invite me and Maru for external, that would be fantastic. So Adam, do you mind doing the scheduling part? Yeah, have you got a list? Okay. So Maru and if there's, yeah, if there's names that show I click it. Yeah. Um, so my my email address is is for invite. Yep. Um, I don't know if you want to put yours in there, Maru. Sure. Cool. That'll be great. I'm I'm actually really looking forward to that meeting because uh, it would save some time to not have to reverse engineer the the submit queue. <laughs> Okay, uh, we are pretty close to time here. Um, anything anybody else wants to cover? I, I did put a link to the new, the 1.8 retro doc that we'll use. Um, and feel free to, if you see things that are released wide as we go through this that you wanna change, that's a great place to do it. Um, any last things that anybody wants to cover before we adjourn? All right, everybody, thank you so, so very much for your time. Uh, super appreciate it. Best release team ever. <laughs> Good day. Okay. Later. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks, all.